Hi, Nick. I see your little filly is, is being really good and calm, and I also like her new halter. She's looking great. So how are you progressing with her? She's doing a lot better uh, uh, now. It took her a little bit, but she's become less skittish and uh, just working on it with her. So what are you doing on a daily basis with her um, to get her to be especially less skittish on touching? Because like I said, I'm even around her face, and I can remember her throwing her head up and um and now she seems really calm and quiet so what have you been doing daily working with her mainly just uh try to desensitize her like get her used to touch and messing around messing with her ears and stuff see and she's still she's better than she was even with her moving back a little bit before you couldn't even get near that ear so she's come a long way since since we had her of course um she started out with strangles so with that abscess under her chin you could barely even get close to it, and you can see I'm doing pretty good. I go slow, but she's doing good. So you did a lot of not only with your hands, but even with the brushes and different types of brushes. So um, how often did you work with her daily to kind of get her to this point? Uh, I work with her a couple hours each day, mostly late in the morning. I would work with her, and then later uh, during the day, I'll work with her again a couple, for a couple hours throughout the day. Now she came to us kind of skin. Where did she come from originally? Like what uh, was her environment before she got here? Because obviously it was much different. She came from a bigger ranch where she didn't get much, uh, uh, much contact with people and stuff. Yeah, I, I think the ranch was about 25,000 acres. And so she was in a large herd of weanlings that literally they pretty much roped her and brought her up when we went to get her the day before and then that's the only real handling she has so she wasn't what we would call imprinting or imprinted so imprint is where they have a baby foal and they immediately start working and doing some of the work that you're doing now but they do that before they even get up so she had none of this desensitization so pretty much what you've been doing is what we would call what systematic desensitization you've been doing it a slow process correct so, because I know, like, you see, like, on, you know, some of the movies, like, or the TV shows, like Yellowstone, they kind of cowboy up and do what we call flooding or sacking out. You've done kind of this in a slow process. Like, how long have you been working with her? Uh, since I got her, I've been working with her, trying to get her used to me, get her desensitized with stuff, and uh, she's been going at it slowly. So, it's been, what, a week or two or even longer? Uh, maybe now, maybe a m month. Almost two months only. Yeah, and it, to be really honest, it's only in the last couple of weeks we started to see where yeah. we can do that. Yeah. Um, I'm honestly surprised just doing this that with both of us in here that she's being as quiet as she is. She's usually, you just said as we walked in, she's not comfortable with other people. Is that correct? Like, yeah, she's used to more you. Yeah. yeah. So that's one thing. Also, how is she, have you gotten her much outside of her stall? And how is she when she's outside of her stall? Is she uh, as quiet as she is right here? When uh, when uh, we let her out in the paddock and stuff, she's, she's a little more skittish, but she runs around and stuff. But it's very hard to catch her after we let her free. Yeah, and she's pretty, and even when you do try to go up and you do try to, and you get her caught, she's definitely a lot jumpier, isn't she, okay? Well, horses are what we call generalized learners. So that means that she knows her environment, she knows you, and she's learned that that's okay in what you're doing. So if we take her outside of this environment and introduce her to different people, um, it creates a new environment that she might be skittish of. Because, you know, horses are, despite their size, are prey animals. So we did a video, didn't we, the other day when we took her outside. How was she? Because it wasn't you that was actually grooming her. Who was it that actually was grooming her when we were outside? And it wasn't me either. Um, so we took her outside and took her out in the backyard and whatnot. And you had a, a, a younger person like you helping. Who was that? Uh, my brother. Yeah, yeah. So he might feed, but he's not in here interacting, is he? Yeah, this has been your job. So you'll see in the video, she's quite jumpy at first when he first starts interacting. Even though y'all are about the same size and everything, she's kind of jumpy. And, of course, the environment, just being out in the environment. How was she just interacting in that environment? We did have the wind going, so she was a little jumpy, wasn't she, at first? Yep. Yeah. So again, you'll see in the video that um, just kind of what we did with her outside of her environment to get her comfortable. Trust me, she wasn't like this, if you notice here. Um, 
Some of the things that you also notice is in between as you were doing the desensitization, you also did some movement and walked around, didn't you? Yeah. If you got a contained horse that's mostly in even a large stall like this or even just kind of a smaller paddock, sometimes when they have that energy, you got to walk around. So you'll see in there, we do some walking around. We even practice some showmanship skills like stop and back and pivot, but just to get some of that energy out of her. So again, the goal is, is work on systematically desensitizing her, which you've done an excellent job and getting her used to different people and different environments. So what's your plan from, from now on for your next thing? What are some of the goals that you want to work on with her? Just keep uh, working with her, get used to us and stuff, to everyone. And uh, uh, work more on leading soon and building a round pin to help, uh, help with that. To yeah, help. to get her to listen to some cues yes. and stuff and get her comfortable with that. Yeah, but we first have to start with just the basic desensitization, don't we? So that the horse isn't uncomfortable when we put the halter on or when you put pressure on. We want them to respond, but we don't want them to freak out, which was kind of originally where she came from, wasn't it? Or how we started. So you've done an excellent job, Nick, and she's looking great and, uh, and responding so differently. So great job, and I look forward to seeing what you do next with her. So Nick, I thought we were doing systematic desensitization. So what are you actually doing here? She was a little bit uh, ready to go. So we decided to take her out and uh, calm her down a little bit. Yeah. And, and of course, she's been in the stall for a while. So that she definitely was energetic um, mm -hmm. and it was windy outside. Yes. Now, what are you doing here? We're, she's calmed down a little bit. So now I'm just going to brush her a little bit. And we're used to her stall where she can... Uh, be near a familiar place. Yeah, I think in the background there is her paddock that she's usually in. So yes. she sees, actually she's been in a paddock with goats, so she sees the goats that she's been buddies with. Um, and so she seems real quiet um, there. So whatever you had done in the stall seems to translate well here. She seems very calm and quiet. Um, but I think next we're going to see when we introduce a new person, so she's used to you, when we actually introduce a new person, she starts to get a little bit jumpy. And is that something that you've seen seen her do um, both in the stall and outside of the stall? Yes. Oh. She's she's calmed down a little bit more, but she's still a little jumpy to every new people she meets. Yeah, and you can see that. That's your brother. Mm -hmm. And you can see, oh, yeah, all of a sudden, quiet horse isn't so quiet anymore. And you haven't done anything else. But I see you're kind of still brushing on her to get her comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you have? What does Bobby have here now that he's working with? We have a weight and height tape uh, we're using. Okay, and have you introduced this before to her in the stall? We have before, but it's but we're just trying to get her used to it again. Outside, yeah, yeah. in the new environment and with Bobby because mm -hmm. Bobby hasn't done this before. Um, and, of course, this is a, a, a normal thing you would want to do anyway to yes. get, their, get their weight and height and whatnot. So, you know, you want them comfortable with it, and she is comfortable in the stall with you doing it, but now we've added Bobby to it, and you can yeah. see all of a sudden yeah, <laughs> she's a very different horse, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, because she was quiet the last time you did it didn't, um, in the stall. Yeah. Um, now, um, of course, she's had a growth spurt, so we might as well talk about this anyway. Um, so when you measured her, um, what was her weight at or when Bobby measured her? She's at 450. Okay, so 450 pounds. So she's actually gained about 50 pounds um, in, a, in a short amount of time. So mm -hmm. um, she definitely, um, we're going to be adding some more feed to her to kind of help with that. But you can see her ears back a little bit. She's kind of getting used to it. And you're there calmly kind of reminded her things are okay. So that's a good thing. She's 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 getting nice and calm, and, and he's able to go ahead and measure that weight. So um, she did really good with that, and there you can see it working. It. Now, what are you doing in this next clip here? We're... Um uh, measuring her height. Okay, so again, she's, you know, and it's getting kind of windy. You can see it right there. So it's flopping mm -hmm. around, and that's good for her to get used to. Um, and we need to know her height so we can kind of see how it's relative to her weight. Um, how high or how tall is she? 13 hands. Okay, and one hand equals four inches. Mm -hmm. And you can see as Bobby goes down, she's not quite sure. Um, we just started working on her feet um, mm -hmm. again, and so she gets a little jumpy too when you try to go down and pick her yeah. feet up. So this is good practice for her, even yeah. though we're not picking it up. So, and she settles in fairly quickly so it's a new person we've done it before in the stall but it was you um and it's a different environment so there you can see him finishing off and getting that and then finally what is he doing this last video 
we're just uh, getting her used to it. So we're desensitizing her by rub rubbing it over her body, getting it close to her face, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and she was skittish. We even saw in the beginning clip of this um, where she was kind of still a little head shy. So that's where he was. he's trying to kind of get her comfortable, really kind of mm -hmm. ear shy. Um, so you can see him there kind of being aggravating. That's what Bobby loves to do anyway. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah. And just keep working on it. And you're going to keep doing it till till she's quiet, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, and I see at the end, you kind of, after she gets done and she's quiet, you quietly walk her off. So you don't let her mm. walk off until after you're done. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And are you going to keep up with this kind of stuff? Yes. All right. Great. Good job, Bob, or Nick. 